welcome to another live stream. It's been a long time. And um, today I have a little bit uh, new project, although I've referred to this book before. The Violoncello and Its History by Joseph Vasilevsky. It's a really fantastic book all about the history of the cello, which includes the cello's precursor, generally thought of as the viola da gamba. I'm going to play just a, an overview of music from the earliest uh, compositions available for the cello that we know of. And it begins, as far as I can ascertain from the, uh, this book and others, that Domenico Gabrielli may well have written the earliest compositions that we still can find today. So he wrote seven richer care, which are solo unaccompanied works. He wrote a canon for two cellos and even two sonatas. Those two sonatas are certainly believed to be the earliest sonatas for cello in existence. So here is the first richer car. It's one page and it's in G minor. Thank mm -hmm. car the seven of them vary greatly in length the first one's one page um there's there's uh number four or five i don't remember now it's in six pages and then there's a couple with two there's a there's one or two with three pages and so on the canon which i'm not going to play now is one page long this richer car was one page long and um what I'm playing from is a really clean uh, copy that's been prepared and is available at IMSLP in the, under the Creative Commons license. So I'm going to say thank you very much to Alberto Gomez that produced this really nice, clean copy. Now. All the other music that I'm going to play is all original publications from the 1700s. Here's an example of one. It takes some getting used to, but thankfully I've been looking at these type of prints, these publications for a while now. 
The next piece is by one of the earliest cellists, as Vasilevsky states in his book. Um, from Germany. <laughs> uh, Gabrielli, of course, is from Italy. But Trimer is from Germany, and he is one of the earliest known cellists and virtuoso cellists at that from Germany. This is from a set of six sonatas. And the, the second cello part is really part of a larger basso continuo part. But I don't have any recordings on hand to duet with myself. So I'm just going to play the first part. And everything else from this point on, well, that's not true. There's one, there's actually another solo part, but most of everything else is going to be a, a duet without the second cello part. So this is a sonata in also in G minor. It begins largo, and then it goes to a Jeek Allegro. I'm going to play straight through without repeats. So this is one very nice early composition. I really like what he's written in this particular sonata and uh, look forward to recording this and putting it up.
very good, very good example of what's being done in the very earliest parts of when the cello really became established in in the world of string playing and really was at that very moment when Tremor was writing music in the early uh, 1700s, the cello was usurping the the place that Gamba had uh, steadily taken for, I think, 300 years is what he, uh, Vasilevsky says. 300 years that the viola da Gamba had taken the role in the orchestra as soloist and as is put uh over the course of three or four pages explained rather that it was uh an instrument above all for voice and what he means by that is it accompanies voice as in opera or oratorios so during the recitatives one must accompany the singer and be well versed in how to do that so it's very very eye-opening and consequently all of these old publications they are written as a score this is really very insightful and practical at the same time so i can see what the the basso continuo this cello part and the chordal instrument part are doing and all of these old publications are written in figured bass so you've got numbers on the second line here you can see there are numbers like five and six and of course in cello playing we don't use number five and number six of course we can't use number six so those are for the chords so if you see a six, it's something like, and a five is something like, something like that. I am not that well versed in figured bass. Uh, I think I know just enough to be, to make it sound interesting according to what is written there. Next, we go on to another Italian composer, this is Francesco Gimignani. And again, it's, it's just a really nice piece of sonata writing. It's, this is an allegro. He also wrote a set of six. I mean, everybody was writing either sets of six or sets of 12. And mostly it's six. And occasionally you find sets of 12. And that's that's really cool. I mean, there's just so much music. It'd take it take um, a long time to record it all. Okay, this one is in B flat, so we just stay in the relative key signature from the previous music.
Uh, it's always surprising how how tricky these pieces are. I mean, I've always really enjoyed Baroque music uh, just because I really enjoy the sweet thirds that or sixths that they're almost always playing around with. And um, despite using very sweet harmony, <laughs> they have some surprising uh, twists, twi surprising jumps or skips. It's probably more like the skips that are surprising. Staying in Italy, there's a composer, Benedetto Marcello, in Suzuki Book 4, you learn two movements from a sonata in minor by Marcello. And I found the entire sonata, of course, um, in a set of six. And reading it for the very first time just a month, I think it was a month ago, was... It, it, I guess invigorating, but very uh, elucidating because you see how he envisioned it. I mean, you see just the bass line with the figured bass numbers above some of the uh, notes. And instead of a uh, somebody's ideal realization of it for a keyboard, as, as in a piano, uh, that sounds good and all on the piano part and, you know, play with it, of course. But when you get the chance to play or look at it with the original intention, uh, it's just fabulous. Now, I would love to spend some time to learn how to ornament and fill out the chords in a, in a stylistic way or a pleasing way, at least a pleasing way, if, if, if not a stylistic. But that would be the end goal. Period, I guess, the way period matter. So this is a, a typical, I guess, Sonata da Chiesa style. Um, now, I just have the general idea, and it doesn't talk a lot about the differences between Sonata da Chiesa and Sonata, Sonata da Camera, but... This one starts out with a slow movement, then a fast movement, then a slow and a fast. So it 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 gives that that idea of a church sonata, like all of um, Vivaldi's six cello sonatas. And apparently more than that, maybe nine. This is an E minor by Benedetto Marcello. <laughs>
learning that uh, as a student, I remember um, I, I liked it in a general sense, but I did not like the piece per se. It was, it was challenging, you know, and I still get tripped up by it even today because it's just it, the way they were writing is just, uh, it's surprising in some ways and also uh, and i must i must say probably anybody that bothers to really you know that's a advanced cellist that bothers to listen to me play will notice that i oftentimes clip the ends of beats or especially up bows and so i end up going very much faster <laughs> like a like a stone rolling down a hill all right, so we stay in Italy. This is getting a little bit later into the 1700s. I think this particular set of caprices, yes, caprices, uh, by Giuseppe Dal Bacco. If I remember right, I didn't make a note of it, but I think it was written in the mid 1700, so 1750, 1760, something like that. I've chosen Caprice number one. It's a really haunting little thing, but it's elegant in a way. It's maybe haunting is not the right word. It's not haunting. I take that back. Maybe if if you uh, <laughs> um, trying to stay positive here. Uh, you know, write your comment, and uh, uh, I'll be shocked if anybody does write a comment. But please, you know, put your put your two cents in, or you probably think you have uh, much more than two cents worth of knowledge. Uh, I happen to think I have mm, about one cent or less, but uh, that's a lifetime of putting myself down. So here we go. I'm going to put that behind me and write. Now play Caprice Number One by Giuseppe Dal Abaco. In and this is in C minor. <laughs> I hate living here. I live in a in an earthquake prone area, and I just I'm just always on pins and needles because whenever every time I I think I feel something shaking, I think it's an earthquake. Obviously, I'm still here, so despite the five 
5.0, 6.0 magnitude that I felt, you know, dozens of times every year. So I just thank God that the angels are watching out over me and I'm, <laughs> I'm still here. And so is my family. Oh, my goodness. It's probably me just getting up tight, you know, from always thinking, oh, there's an earthquake, maybe, but also I'm uptight by the show. <laughs> anyway, what do you think about that piece? I, I think it's just really, really lovely. Uh, he wrote 11 Caprices. It, it seems as if he didn't complete them for some reason. It should have 12. By all standards, there should be 12 there. Um, uh, because number 11 was incomplete in the, <coughs> excuse me, in the manuscript. And even the fair, uh, copy that was recently done by Charles Henning. So again, Creative Commons, a license. Thank you so much for, for putting in the time to create this really clean copy. It's just really nice. Uh, I would have done it myself because it's almost illegible to read directly from the manuscript. Uh, but this was already there and the, and the Creative Commons license allows me to, to do it. So now we go to a method by a Wilkinson, but uh, I didn't say all the, both the names. It's Broderip and Wilkinson. So it's in England. And this is one of the earliest methods that I am aware of, also mentioned in um, the violoncello in its history. The interesting thing here is that they have used an immigrant's music throughout their method. Uh, much of it is by... Uh, Jacopo Baseve, Basevi Cervetto, so Cervetto the Elder, who immigrated from Italy to England when he was in his 40s. Now, this piece that I'm going to play first is, uh, is actually a folk song, and it's called uh, Peggy Perkins. And I think this is this is extraordinary to see that they're using folk music in a method at the earliest point in cello's history. I, this is, I think this is really cool. So it's not just something that Suzuki said, hey, let's use folk music. Nope, this has been done for hundreds of years prior to Suzuki. Uh, wonderful, wonderful stuff. So. Suzuki was in good company when he decided to use folk songs. So this is in G major. <laughs> just two lines, uh, you know, like a, like an eight or 16 measure piece. Now here's an, uh, duet. There are a lot of duets in here. And again, you know, the method, the method has duets. This is, this is just so eye opening. I, I didn't know this existed until about two months ago when I started reading systematically reading to the, this, this book, this 200 page book. So here is a little minuet. Of course, I can only play one part at a time. So here we go with the with the solo part there. That's much better. I, I changed the, the direction of the mic. Hopefully it's still okay for the cello. It's a little bit a little bit muted. So I'll put it back down. And directly following 
that is, guess what? Handel, see the conquering hero comes from Judas Maccabeus. Contemporary, that's all I'm gonna say, contemporary. <laughs> Interesting fact about this Broderip and Wilkinson method that uses Cervetto's, a lot of Cervetto's music and arrangements. At the beginning, they go through the fingering in, in great detail. And on top of that, they go through every scale with fingerings. And then after that, they go through a, a couple of dozen um etudes you know one measure uh one measure one line like eight measures 16 measures again it's the same thing short and sweet uh helping the student get a grasp of what the cello is all about just really interesting historical facts that are there accessible to anybody who wants to take a look at them Okay, I'm gonna finish. Uh, let's see where it went to.